So to my students who are viewing this video, it is my great pleasure to introduce you to Dr. Kurt Roundson, who is a contributor to the Dissociation Made Simple book project. He's one of the professional contributors that I really wanted to make sure I interviewed because I, we have always seen him as just innately understanding about dissociation. And I've shared this with my students before that we tend to gauge our trust of a fellow professional by how safe our four-year-old part feels around them. And we have mm -hmm. always just felt that that regard from, uh, from Kurt, who we learned of as an EMDR trainer, not even, he wasn't even our own trainer. He was our friend's trainer. And she told us the story about how there's this trainer, Kurt Ronson, who said in EMDR therapy, this, this first exercise we teach people, the calm, safe place exercise, it is fundamentally a dissociative exercise. It's adaptive dissociation. We're asking people to step outside of themselves. And even when I heard that, I said, this, this guy knows what he's doing. So Kurt, how did you get into the field? How did you get into EMDR? Well, I, I was in the field, um, Many years before EMDR came along, I started. I my first license was in 1976 as a marriage family therapist, and then I went on and got my doctorate in clinical psych, and got licensed in uh, clinical psych in '83 here in California. But it was in my pre-doc internship when I had experience with a, a young 16, 17 year old girl, who I came to find out had then what we call multiple personality disorders. And I just dis discovered it when she came in one day as this kind of uh, cheerleading look, blonde hair, green eyed girl. And then the next time I met her, she was wearing bib overalls, a white t-shirt. And she came in and, and it, was a, it was a protector. He called, called himself Cliff. And he was checking me out to make sure I was safe because she was being horribly abused. And unfortunately, I, you know, I mean, I truly didn't know what I was getting into. I didn't know what was going on. I, I, I left the young woman in the consulting room. I'll be right back. That's how stunned I was at first. And I went out and a psychologist, a woman psychologist that passed me actually had done a lot of work. I did not know it at the time with uh, multiple personality disorders and with Colin Ross uh, already in the past. And she became kind of a, a mentor for me for that year. I was adjunct to her and I saw what really good therapy could do. And that's when I began to realize that dissociation was a necessary survival skill and that we all did it. And some people just have a reason to do it more than others because of what they grow up in. So I was doing work, uh, doing hypnotic kind of work, because that's really about all we had in the 80s uh, was hypnotherapy and working with uh, dissociative disorders, things like that. And then I just happened to take a training with Francine Shapiro. I, did, I didn't want to. I thought it was stupid. I came from a scientist practitioner model uh, in, you know, where, where I went to school. It, the, the focus was really on in, empirically what we now call EBTs, empirically validated treatments. And I was really ingrained in that. And a uh, social worker that I was friends with at the time said she had gone to this training and I thought she was nuts. Mm -hmm. I thought, of course. And Francine Shapiro was from Northern California. You know, those Northern Californians, Ah, you know, they're all nuts. So I just had all this at the time, right? I, I was in Southern California. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Northern California. That's different. Yeah. And uh, so she, she actually, challenged me to go and see if it would help. She also said, if you don't think it was worthwhile, I'll personally reimburse the cost of the workshop. Yeah. That's how much she meant it. So I went and uh, it became life-changing for me because it began to fill in something that, well, let me, I hope you'll appreciate this, but hypnotherapy involves an altered state of consciousness. Mm -hmm. And I thought it was interesting that I was doing an altered state of consciousness to deal with other levels of consciousness in, in, a, in my patient. Mm -hmm. And with EMDR, I found out, you know, I didn't have to create an altered state in order to deal with altered states. Does that make sense? It makes a lot of sense. And do you feel that's valuable when you work with clients who dissociate? That, you mean with EMDR? Yeah, just with EMDR. Yeah, absolutely. I think, I think it cuts down uh the, the time of of trauma work 
Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the beginning phases, it takes, it still takes a long time to, to find out, develop. By the way, I was very touched when you talked about your four-year-old. That made me feel as one of the best things that I, anyone has ever said. Because as you know, we have to have relationship with all the parts inside. And uh, it takes time to do that. And um, I think once we begin the work of trauma, EMDR moves through it much more rapidly than other approaches that I had done it with, dealt yeah. with in the past. Now, something you say in Dissociation Made Simple is if you really want to become a good therapist, find a dissociative client and listen to them. And I think that applies for EMDR therapists, that applies for therapists in, in any modality. And I, I just applaud you for, again, accepting our minds like that. Yet the question I fundamentally have for you, knowing you know, you're a trainer, you, you've supervised and trained others, what is this fear that therapists, even trauma therapists, seem to have around dissociation? Well, I think it goes back in part centuries when uh, I believe people with dissociative disorders were labeled demonic from institutional perspectives and therefore evil and bad and people did not know what they were looking at. And I think that sort of prejudice came into modern times and we began to look at them. And, and most people think of dissociative disorder like the movies portray it, you know, which is simply not true. Uh, some elements of truth, but mostly it's all Hollywood. And they, they miss the piece that dissociation is based on survival. We are organized to survive. And dissociation is one of the primary, I believe, you know, Harry Stack Solomon uh, differed from Freud. And he said, there's only two types of defense mechanisms. That's selective inattention and dissociation. He said that back in the early 1900s. Uh, and I think dissociation is the fundamental, rather than repression, which is what the analysts, the Freudians believed, being the primary defense structure. I believe dissociation is an organic built-in defense structure for survival. And people don't understand the shifts they see. They get scared because of that mythology. And they don't understand that it's necessary to survive and i really do mean it there's wisdom in the systems yes that's the piece that i think most clinicians need to understand that patient standing before me sitting before me has survived sometimes horrific things even i can't imagine but they survive because they're the system that they've created has created for them a way to deal with the un, the undealable and our job isn't to translate their system into some other framework. Our job is to understand the wisdom of the system that sits before us. And we can only do that, as I shared with you in other settings, with a sense of clinical humbleness. We have to have humility and realize that, that our job is to understand the system yeah. and not make the system into something that we think they need to be made into. Right. And Does that make sense? Makes a lot of sense. And you know, my concerns I've expressed that a lot of clinicians or the MDR therapists don't want to touch dissociation because they're afraid of their own. However, I also see that there can be a legitimate barrier around what feels overwhelming, what feels unpredictable, like you encountered that first time Cliff showed oh, yeah. I, I just want to normalize for clinicians. Yeah, it, it, if you haven't seen it before, it can be very intimidating or or scary. And and I know a lot of clinicians I train come from this good natured place of I don't want to do more harm. Right. So I know yeah, it's yeah. a big question, but it's the question I was really wanting to ask you in this. What coaching, what advice, what best practice would you give to a clinician who is just intimidated, scared, and they and they don't want to do more harm? Consult, consult, consult. There are people out there in the EMDR community and the social disorder community that uh, have worked a long time and, and can help with that. But again, you see, 
that involves a little sense of clinical humility. Correct. To be able to go, reach out to someone and say, I don't know enough about this. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes they need to refer because their own issues are getting too much in the way. Mm -hmm. But none of us got into this business. None of us started working. At least I didn't start doing what I did working in dissociative disorders because I said, oh, I want to work with dissociative disorders. Right. They walk through the door. And once you're able to identify them, you realize that there are a lot more out there than anyone believes. And even, even my own trainees, I'll say, them, you know, they say, oh, I don't deal with dissociative disorder. I said, oh, yeah, you do. You just don't know what you're looking at. Every practice has it because dissociation is so necessary. Uh, so consult, consult, consultation. And more recently, Dr. Jamie Marish, I've been re referring people to your book, Dissociation Made Simple, because I think it's a necessary step. And I, it's a, I like the fact that you take, there's caution, but there's permission to take the patient where they're at and learn from them, just like we've been talking about. And so I think, it, I think, you know, reading things, going to conferences, consulting, but realize that your clinical humility means that you reach out to people and not be afraid to, to admit, I don't know how to do, how, how we'll go about doing this. So well said. And I'm glad to hear you affirm consultation because the more and more I do this, the more I'm recommending consultation, even over training. It's not to say training is not important. However, I think so many trainings are set up to do a real step-by-step, -step, this is what you do. And I think any clinical diagnosis, but especially dissociative disorders, we're, we're good at throwing curveballs and not being- Oh, prepared. yeah. And, and so that's, oh, yeah. I think having a consultant to really walk you through some of your initial fears and your first couple cases that you know of as, as being dissociative presentations, uh, I, I think it gives you the coaching and the encouragement you need. That's how I try to teach and write, yet we, we all need the extra help, but I'm so glad how you, you center that around humility. Yeah, yeah, very much so. And you never know, listen, you know, I tell a story in my trainings that, you know, I've worked with association for years, decades. And uh, a few years ago, I, I made a comment. I, I would say I don't work with I don't I don't work with uh, dissociative disorders from the beginning anymore because you're dedicating a certain amount of time of your life, and I don't know if I'm going to be, you know, spending all those years working with that person. And so I do more consultation and dealing with more of the things that surround the work with dissociation. And I had a I had a patient come in. And I actually, I will, I will humbly admit, I saw her for about 18 months, two years. She was a mental health professional and uh, she had heard me speak and I made the comment, I'm not taking any more active dissociative disorders into my caseload. And about 18 months into it, she finally confessed that she had a system. And the reason she didn't tell me is she says, I knew you wouldn't have taken me. Wow. Now that wasn't true. I would have, mm -hmm. but that's how as you say, the curveballs that are thrown. Mm -hmm. I was, quote, an expert, mm -hmm. and I didn't pick it up, Jamie. I didn't pick it up. She was smart. that good. And that's how smart our systems can be to get our... Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And by the way, she's an excellent therapist. Wonderful. You know, And thank so. you for your affirmation that people with dissociative disorders can be excellent therapists. And Oh, yeah. Kurt, thanks for taking this time, even though it was a short conversation and we've had longer ones before. I, I think it'll be very valuable to my students. And uh, just thank you for your service and for your embracing of dissociative minds. Oh, my pleasure. And thank you for being out there on the cutting edge of that.